Hello. Today we'll be going to look at the path independence for a line integral. So what does that mean? So let's say we have two points on the xy plane. Okay? Point A and point B. And let's say we draw a curve from point A to point B. Let's say it's this light blue curve here. And let's say this curve is in a vector field, f, which is a function of x and y. Okay? And let's say that this vector field is the gradient of a scalar field, s. Okay? So what path independence means is that if you have a vector field that is the gradient of a scalar field, then it doesn't matter what curve you choose from point A to point B. It could be the pink curve, it could be the blue curve, it could be any curve. Path independence means that if you take the line integral of your vector field with your curve, you're going to get the exact same result. So basically, path independence states that it doesn't matter which curve you have from point A to point B, as long as the points are fixed and the vector field is the gradient of a scalar, okay? And when the vector field is the gradient of a scalar, it's called a conservative vector field. So in this video, we're going to prove mathematically path independence. So first of all, we need to know the multivariable chain rule. So let's say we take L and L is a function of X and Y. And we want to find the time derivative. So we do dl by dt, okay? This is equal to the partial of L with respect to x times the rate of change of x dx by dt. And then we add the partial of L with respect to y times the rate of change of the y coordinate with respect to t. Okay, that is the definition for the multivariable chain rule. And this is going to be very useful for our further calculations. So when we take the line integral, we know that we have a curve C. In this case, it doesn't matter which curve we have, it's just any curve. Our vector field, F, and we dot it with dr. Okay, so we need dr. Again, we know that r is equal to x times i plus y times j, okay? Remember, this r is a vector-valued function for our curve c, all right? So, the time derivative, dr by dt, dr by dt is equal to the derivative of x, plus the derivative of y. Okay, this should just be a nice, simple recap multiplied by the j component. And, of course, to find dr, we simply multiply both sides by dt. So, dr, therefore, is equal to dx by dt plus dy by dt. Okay, and we times that by dt. So, we've got r. Now let's look at our uh, vector field again, f. It's the gradient of a scalar field, s. So let's take a closer look at what we're dealing with here. So f, I'll write it again, f is equal to del s. Now we should know that the gradient is calculated by this. It is the partial of s with respect to x times i plus the partial of s with respect to y times j. Alright, that is the gradient. So we want to take the line integral and by doing so, we do f dot dr, all right? So this should be very simple. 
Therefore, we get the line integral over our curve C, f dot dr. This is going to equal the x component for our f. Well, f is simply, so we're taking the integral again, x component of f is ds by dx. Now we multiply that by the x component of our dr. Well, that's just dx by dt. And then we add, because it's the dot product, the y component of f, which is ds by dy. And then we multiply the y component of our dr, which is dy by dt. Now, if you don't know already, this is the multivariable chain rule, okay? Remember what we had up here? Where is it? There it is. dl by dt is equal to that. That, as you can see, is in the same format as that. Therefore, this here is simply the rate of change of our scalar field, ds by dt, okay? So we're not finished yet. Let's just uh, sum up what we've just done. All right. So we had, what did we have? We had the line integral of our curve C, f dot dr. Okay. We found this was equal to the integral of C of ds by dt dt. All right. So, what is the integral of ds by dt with respect to dt? That is simply, well, the dt's cancel. The integral of ds is simply s. All right, so therefore, the integral of f dot dr from our points a to b, okay, is going to equal s evaluated at b minus s evaluated at a. Now, that is the proof. Let me explain. Okay, so remember, curve C is any curve between our points A and B. So basically, the end result just depends on our two fixed points, B and A. As you can see, it does not depend on the curve. Okay, it just depends on the scalar field. F is equal to del s, grad s, okay? f is a conservative vector field. If that's the case, then we can see that the line integral only depends on the two endpoints, not the curve that is connecting the endpoints. Okay, and that is path independence, because the line integral does not depend on the curve. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.